body of water resting on a revolving table. Eventually this body reaches what is known as solid body rotation. If we add a temperature gradient, we disturb the system. Cooling the center of the tank alters the density of the water and causing it to plunge downwards and towards the outside. Inversely, the warmer water shoots to the surface of the tank and towards the heat sink. In the stationary tank, the water will just flow up and around and down. However, when we have a rotating tank, it adds a new force to the equation, quite literally. We see spirals form. Ooh, pretty spirals. I want him. I want him. That one's going to be Swirly McSwirlface. Um, no. Okay, how about Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Actually, they are called Eddies. Like those things that are formed in rivers with rocks and stuff? Well, they're formed in more than just rivers. They can be all over the place, like in the oceans, in the atmospheres. Joke's on you. That can't be true. There aren't rocks in the atmosphere. That's actually not why we see eddies here. Any number of forces can form an eddy. An eddy is any part of the flow where the direction differs from the rest of the flow. In our tank, we've got a bunch of eddies, but in a river, there's a couple. So why? Well, the difference between our tank and the river is the Rossby number. This is the ratio of inertial forces to the Coriolis force, and it's defined as U over LF. For a system like the Earth, the U is the characteristic velocity, L is the length scale, and F is the Coriolis frequency, which is the angular frequency and the sign of the latitude. So if this is a dimensionless number, what's the physical meaning behind it? Well, it can tell us which forces in a system matter the most, and it allows us to ignore the rest. Oh, like how I ignore my gen ed for engineering classes. Yup. A large Rossby number tells us that the inertial and centrifugal forces dominate, and this can be in the case of a small length scale or a large velocity. For example, in a tornado. Wait, are you just reading from Wikipedia? No. A low pressure system, such as the atmosphere, has a low Rossby number, and the dominating forces are the pressure forces and the Coriolis force. Our system is set up such that we have a slow moving flow in a tank rotating much faster at 10 rotations per minute. This ratio of much smaller velocity to larger angular frequency tells us that our system has a low Rossby number, and we see that the Coriolis force will dominate in the formation of these large spirals relative to the size of the system.